We have checked the tape of the Dolphins' Week 6 victory over the Carolina Panthers, and I have a few observations for what stood out to me from the coach's film on the offensive side of the football. That here today on this episode of Locked on Dolphins. You are Locked on Dolphins, your daily Miami Dolphins podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Miami, welcome to another episode of Locked On Dolphins. It's your team every day here on the Locked On Network. I'm your host, Kyle Krabs, a lifelong Miami Dolphins fan, host of Locked On Dolphins, co-host of Locked On NFL Scouting. You can find our shows on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast, Tip of Decap, to our everydayers. Do keep it locked in on a daily basis because it is your team every day. We don't just say it, we live it here on the Locked On Network. Today's episode of Locked On Dolphins is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account. Use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase on last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. We checked the tape, and it was not a fun first quarter because the Dolphins ran seven plays <laughs> in the first quarter, uh, two three and outs. Uh, to kick things off against Carolina, a 14 to nothing hole. Uh, but once they got going, the Dolphins showcased quite a bit of what you would expect based off of the pace that the Dolphins yardage and points is on throughout the course of the first five games prior to Sunday against the Panthers. Now, uh, the Dolphins finished this game with 424 yards of offense, one turnover offensively, 42 points. 23 first downs. Uh, they have had pretty consistent across the board uh, production from a running game perspective after week one. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later here on the show, but this conversation has to start with Liam Eichenberg. Uh, Liam Eichenberg, of course, the much maligned offensive lineman for the Dolphins, who uh, the, the team drafted in the second round. Uh, the team struggled to find a home for him in his first two seasons in the NFL. And uh, it, it's kind of become this, uh, I don't want to say gloom and doom, but there's a lot of apprehension when it came out that Liam Eikenberg was the team's backup center after taking some snaps in mini camp and OTAs uh, as a center for the team, despite playing both guard and tackle throughout the course of his first couple of seasons with the team. And the week, the, the, the debut of Liam Eikenberg against uh, at the center position came against the Buffalo Bills in week four, and it was, the Dolphins' worst offensive performance of the season. They scored just 20 points. They had just 20 first downs. Those were both season lows. 393 yards of offense, but two turnovers uh, in a 28-point loss. And Daquan Jones at Oliver, they kind of get after Lee Meikenberg quite a bit. Well, then Connor Williams is back for week. Lee Meikenberg is back in the lineup this past week against Carolina. And I would say it was a better performance for Liam Eikenberg. I don't know if you're on social media. If you are, you probably saw Pro Football Focus credited him across 30 plus snaps in pass protection with zero pressures allowed, which is like the second time in his career that that's ever happened, regardless of what position he's playing. I will say this I think some of the issues of Liam Eikenberg have the potential to get mitigated at the center position. Would I say he's a long term answer at the position? No, probably not. I still think it's very fresh and new. Did I think he played a reasonable football game for the Dolphins as a center, a starting center against the Carolina Panthers? Yes. Um, there were a couple of instances in protection where his man was the one who got his hands up and batted down a few passes at the line of scrimmage at least twice. That was the case, which was a bit of a bummer. Uh, there were some run game assignments that still kind of show the greenness of Liam Eikenberg, the play that everybody remembers from Sunday where Raheem Mostert is out on the edge and gets tackled and he's on the ground and he's yelling. He's yelling at Liam Eikenberg because the Dolphins ran, Mike McDaniel was in his bag as far as misdirection, backfield, pulling guards, but then we're pulling the center the other way and we're running jet motion, but the jet motion at the snap of the ball is going to turn and pivot back the other way and you're going to run an end around with two backs on the, like, Linebackers are in hell, right? It, it's just absolute madness trying to be linebacker and defend this Dolphins offense. That play in question, they pull Robert Hunt to the left. They run the end around with Raheem Moser to the right. Julian Hill is in jet motion at the snap. 
going from right to left. And at the snap, he stops and gets back outside, going back the way he came. And Liam Eikenberg is the pulling offensive lineman who gets out in front. So on the edge, you have Liam Eikenberg, and behind him, you have Julian Hill as two escort blockers for this end around for Raheem Mostert. And there's one Carolina Panthers defender who is flowing into the flow of both of these blockers, and it's Troy Hill. And Liam Eikenberg is out in front, and he lets Troy Hill flow directly past him. And he kind of throws his hand out there to acknowledge his presence, but then he keeps on going. And Julian Hill takes another three steps, and he kind of looks back at Troy Hill, and you kind of see his hands turn up like, what, what just happened? And they both go to block the safety down the field. And Raheem Mostert gets tackled in a one-on-one by Troy Hill in that instance. And, and that is an example of a assignment that it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see what happened and understand the offensive lineman. The, the lead blocker should take the first arriving defender and then the tight end or the second blocker will take the next arriving defender. And instead they both went to the second defender and nobody picked up the first defender on the spot. And it really took away what could have been an explosive game. Remind me to come back to the running game in general, because we're talking about an explosive game that missed that plus the Raheem Mostert run where he got bumped by Alec Ingold, uh, two explosive runs that uh, Miami just missed on. But I go to another play for Liam Eikenberg. And I, again, I, I want to make sure that I emphasize, I do think Liam struggles with strike timing, uh, getting qu quickness, interior quickness, or explosiveness on the edge. So if he's a tackle, I'm not sure he's quite equipped to deal with the explosiveness of outside edge rushers because he doesn't have great length and he doesn't have a great anchor. And then on the interior, the first step is much quicker. Things happen faster, and his strike timing's not quite refined because he had been a tackle at college for his entire career. I do think at center, you're much more of a help player. There's less instances in which you are isolated in a one-on-one -on -one situation. The defenders that are lined up in a gap to try to shoot a gap on you are not three techniques. They're one techniques or two techs. Uh, the, the three tech is traditionally the much more explosive, dynamic, twitchy interior player. So, and, and as a, uh, as a center, you are more of a help player uh, as compared to being a pillar of the blocking surface. So I do think there are things to take away from this game against Carolina that I can look at and point to and say, yeah, you know, believe it or not, I didn't necessarily know that was going to be the case, but you can kind of see where, Liam Eikenberg's kind of caught between a rock and a hard place at tackle and guard. Center maybe alleviates some of those, but there's still meat on the bone. I go back to uh, there was a low red zone run that Savan Ahmed had in which Liam Eikenberg was responsible for a uh, back block on a three technique. So Robert Hunt is pulling around the formation and trying to wrap up into the hole going from right to left. So... Kendall Lamb's blocking down. There's a linebacker. It was Camu Grugier Hill uh, who was kind of walked up on the line of scrimmage. The tight end is going to split flow into and kick out the defensive end. Robert's going to wrap up into the hole and pick up the next arriving defender. And Liam, all he has to do is hit a back block on a three technique. He's on the backside of the formation. He comes out of the blocks too flat. He doesn't get on the inside shoulder of the three technique. He kind of glances across his face. And that defensive tackle is then able to press and extend and cross the face of the down block from Liam Eikenberg and scrape over top of the play and help to tackle Savan Ahmed in the hole because Liam didn't take a crisp angle and didn't hit his landmark on the down block. So, I do think there's some good to work with here. I think he played a respectable game, which is a higher floor than what the standard has been for Liam across his first two seasons. He has greatly struggled. This is one of his best performances as a pro. There's still room for improvement. There's still things that have to get better. But I think all things considered, it was a win 
uh, for the Dolphins and a win for Liam Eikenberg. Now, we are going to talk about the running game in general. That is next here on this episode of Locked On Dolphins, so stick with us. Today's episode of Locked On Dolphins is sponsored by BetterHelp. Do you ever feel like your brain is getting in its own way? Like you know what you should do, what's good for you, but you just can't do it with any level of consistency. Therapy helps you figure out what is holding you back so you can work for yourself instead of working against yourself. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's done entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. You can fill out a brief questionnaire. You can match with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H E L P.com slash locked on. Did the game just go to timeout? Time to order with DoorDash. If it's halftime, that's ordering time, two minute warning. You got it. That's your cue to get your order in. You can get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more with your first order. When you download the DoorDash app and enter code LOCKED23, subject to change, terms do apply. If you want to order wings, pizza, soda, burgers, or even just buns on DoorDash, you can get it all delivered without missing the game. All of your favorite restaurants and stores from retail to grocery are on the app, so you can shop everything you need to get game day ready. So get prepared for game day, stock up on your favorite appetizers, and order all your tailgate gear on DoorDash and get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order when you download the DoorDash app and enter code LOCK23, subject to change terms to apply. That's 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more with your first order on DoorDash. Download the DoorDash app, enter code LOCK23, subject to change and terms do apply. So the running game in general for Miami, this is not a small feat. Uh, we're going to acknowledge this off the jump. The Dolphins have rushed as a team for at least 142 yards on the ground in five consecutive games. The last time the Dolphins had five consecutive games in which they rushed for 100 or more yards of offense. You have to go back to 2014. Weeks three, weeks four, weeks six, they had a bye week five. Week seven, week eight, and week nine, they made it six consecutive games of rushing for 100 or more yards on the ground as a team. They did it comfortably for game number five, and, and they are clearing 100 yards by a healthy, healthy clip. They've gone over 200 yards twice. They've gone over 150 yards three times. And one of the times that they didn't get 150, they got 145. The Dolphins were one block from Liam Eikenberg and one friendly fire contact from Alec Ingold away from probably having 250 again against the Panthers. Because Raheem Mostert right now is a man possessed. Raheem Mostert is hearing all of the talk about the running backs that the Dolphins were interested in kicking the tires on. Raheem Mostert is hearing all of the talk that he's uh, too old to be a primary running back. Raheem Mostert is hearing all of the talk of the major blow incurred by the Dolphins to have Devon A. Chan go on injured reserve, and he does not care about any of it. And this man is going out and giving you absolutely phenomenal effort on a weekly basis. He might be my favorite player on the team. When you think about Raheem Mostert's story, being a player who was cut as many times as he was, who got a late start, needed an opportunity, finally got it in San Francisco. And the way he's evolved, the way he evolved his body this offseason to add more weight and it's showing up, he is running hard. His low red zone runs mean business. He's getting up onto the second level, and the Dolphins are getting excellent horizontal displacement. Outstanding horizontal displacement. You have outstanding effort from guys like Cedric Wilson, guys like Julian Hill, guys like Alec Ingold, guys like Durham Smythe. You got Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill blocking down on cracked toss 
and they're sealing like NFL defensive ends. And Raheem is getting north and he's putting his foot in the ground and he is exploding into these runs. And I love that Raheem Mostert has a missed block and he's fired up about it on the ground. I love that Raheem. And if you listen to the broadcast of the game, you heard Raheem Mostert yell an expletive laying on the ground when he bumped into Alec Ingle because he knew it was at least another 40 yards. It gets you fired up. Raheem Mostert's got me fired. And Raheem Mostert is, is living his best life. 429 yards on 75 carries. He's averaging 5.7 yards per attempt. He's got 11 touchdowns. That's a career high already for Raheem Mostert. We're in week six. We're in, we're, we just finished week six. He's averaging two touchdowns a game. And just everything that you possibly hope that he would be after the season that he had last year, he's showcasing. And the Dolphins have reinforcements coming with Jeff Wilson. They do have Devon Chain coming back off of IR at some point. So you're going to have an opportunity to keep the workload light and keep him fresh. But my goodness, is he playing outstanding football right now? And I look at guys like Julian Hill. Very quickly going to become one of my favorite guys on the team as well. Was kind of skeptical in the preseason, had some bright flashes, but it's the consistency in which he's doing things right now. Like he had one uh, split flow motion at the snap slice where he came across the set and he kicked out uh, Brian Burns and he at contact knocked Brian Bar Burns four yards out of the way for Raheem Mostert to get north and gouge the Panthers defense. You're a UDFA from Campbell University hitting Brian Burns between the eyes and knocking him four yards out of the way? Outstanding effort. There is so much confidence in the front and the execution of the front. And they'll get a good test, the Dolphins will, against the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, the Eagles have a really good defensive front. They've got a lot of talent on the interior. This is an Eagles team defensively that's ninth in yards this week or ninth in yards thus far this season, they have allowed 100 yards once to an opposing offense. That was against the Washington Commanders, and that was an overtime game. Patriots, 76 yards. The Vikings, 26 yards. The Bucks, 41 yards. The Rams, 54 yards. The Jets, 89 yards. Now, I will say, the Eagles have not played a rushing offense quite to the caliber from an offensive line perspective an execution perspective, an explosiveness perspective of what they will face against the Miami Dolphins. So I think this is a really good litmus test for Miami, but it's also going to be a litmus test for the Philadelphia Eagles. But there is so much confidence. And I didn't even think from an offensive line execution perspective, this was like your best game. You know, you had some really bright flashes with Rob Hunt bullying guys again. Uh, I thought from a pass protection standpoint, Kendall Lamb played an admirable football game. Austin Jackson played a really clean football game. We've already talked at length about Liam Eikenberg. I thought Isaiah Wynn was fine. But all things considered, this, this was not the overwhelming performance. You had Derek Brown, his former top 10 pick. He flashed a few times. He made a number of plays. You had a few plays where every frontside block lost their matchup. And that happens sometimes. Oh, credit to Frankie Louvu for running over top of Rob Hump trying to climb to the second level. Credit to Derek Brown, who's lined up in a four eye, beating Austin Jackson with first cut punch contact. Credit the safety for getting his hands on the wide receiver that's trying to step down on him. And the Dolphins are trying to run to the perimeter, and all three of those blocks lose, and it's a, a one yard gain. That happens sometimes. You had a few of those throughout the course of this game. And, and you know, one of them was with Chris Brooks trying to run to the left. And, and that's not really Chris Brooks's bread and butter. Now, Chris Brooks did have the angry run at the end of the game, which was an absolute blast. Was relieved to hear Mike McDaniel say on Monday that that is a, a week to week injury for Chris Brooks. That is a bullet dodged. Uh, very relieved to hear that for Chris because that did not look like a promising injury when it first happened. So, remind me from a run game perspective, it's all design. It's all athleticism. It's all confidence. It's execution. It's physicality. They're big boy and people up front. They did it against the Panthers. 
and you're you're getting your young drafted free agent tight end who's taken really significant snaps at this stage. Julian Hill is. Uh, he he's. You could tell me Julian Hill is going to get to the end of the rainbow this season, and if you told me he took more snaps in a game than Durham Smythe, I would not be disappointed. I would not be surprised. In games in which Julian Hill has dressed, he is playing over 40% of the snaps for the Dolphins. Eye-opening number. 43% of snaps, 112 offensive snaps in four games for Julian Hill. And he's playing well. We'll talk about the passing output. Of course, Tyreek Hill, another big game. Jalen Waddle with another touchdown. That is going to be coming up next here on this episode of Locked on Dolphins. So stick with us. If you're interested in, in going to the game, but you're a little bit of a spur-of-the-moment type person, uh, got good news for you. Game time. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets for your next big event. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you with killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying your tickets. So uh, what I love about game time is there's nothing worse than showing up to the stadium with a ticket and you get like the general section view, but you don't know exactly what you're signing yourself up for, you can get the view from your seat before you buy with game time, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Uh, you can buy tickets in seconds with just a few taps on your phone, and you can find exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals for tickets on football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. The game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less game time, we'll credit you 110% of the difference. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, use code locked on NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply again. Create an account and redeem code locked on NFL for $20 off. Download game time today for last minute tickets with the lowest price guarantee. So from a passing game perspective, I, I would like to acknowledge Tua Tonga Valoa. Uh, Tua finished this game with a 67% completion percentage, uh, 262 yards of offense passing. He was not sacked. He had three touchdowns, zero interceptions. Narrowly missed his fourth touchdown pass, trying to sneak it in uh, on a play-action pass in the low red zone. Uh, to Durham Smythe. He also had Jalen Waddle going the opposite direction that was open on the play. Uh, Waddle did get a touchdown uh, yet again for Miami, which uh, I think is a uh, a nice development because I do think we acknowledged uh, earlier this season that Jalen Waddle's involvement was something we were hoping to see more of. Uh, Jalen Waddle in his first three games that he played didn't have more than six targets and didn't catch more than four balls. Well, the last two weeks against the Giants, and against the Panthers, Waddle's been targeted 19 times. He's caught 12 passes. Now, he's caught 12 passes for an average of 7.2 yards per catch. He's got 12 catches for 86 yards and two touchdowns. So, Waddle getting a few more chunk opportunities. Waddle creating a little bit more after the catch. Waddle maybe getting in on some of the concepts that Tyreek Hill is so frequently being used as as the primary target. I think is maybe kind of the next evolution of the offense, just as you continue to keep teams on their heels. But what I loved most about the implementation of the wide receivers in week, week six against the Panthers, the Dolphins' first two offensive possessions were an abject disaster. You know, you got hardly any yards of offense. You spotted them 14 points. You take over. And what do you do? It's the last play of the first quarter. It's first and 10. You get the ball back. You're down 14 points. You put Tyreek on that out motion and Jalen Waddle on the same side of the field, and you rip the top off. And Tua Tungvalu rips a 20-yard dig route to Tyreek Hill in stride. Utilizing that speed when all, when the going gets hard, you got guys with superpowers. Play them off of each other, create space, and get, get, get chunk gains and gouge opposing defenses. And the Dolphins did that. And that was the thing that I loved the most as I watched uh, the, the coaches film to see, hey, we're having a rough go. 10 and 17, same side, vertical, let's go. Uh, one thing that I appreciated that the Dolphins did do, we talked on Friday about uh, being leery about power passing to a dynamic pass rusher and Brian Burns. 
So the Dolphins ended up, they did power pass against him, which is when you pull an offensive guard, you kind of sell power run game, uh, but it's play action pass. And your pulling guard is going to be the outside blocker on one of the edges of the pocket. Well, the Dolphins, when they did this, they put Durham Smythe to the same side as Brian Burns, and they also put Alec Ingold in an H-back alignment to the same side of Brian Burns as well. So what you've done is you've added two additional gaps. So Brian Burns has to play wider. And then Alec Ingold chips and delay releases and does a one Mississippi before he gets out into his check down route. And Brian Burns has to engage him. And then when Brian Burns gets off of that block, now Robert Hunt is completely through his pull. And it's not the situation that you had in the preseason game against Houston, where Will Anderson is lined up off the offensive tackles outside shoulder. And the pulling guard can't get there because we're explosive and fire right off off the ball and we're in the quarterback's lap and we create chaos and a negative play. So I loved that you added to the surface to the side of Brian Burns and then you still had somebody who engaged with him and forced him to play through contact. It's it's uh, the the minute details of this offense and how everything is done for a purpose, everything is done for a reason and it's a great embodiment of why this scheme is firing on all cylinders the way that it is because there, it, there, there's intent behind the structure. There's intent behind the motions. There's intent behind how you're setting up your passes. There's intent in how the plays play off of each other. There was one that Tyree Kill had. Uh, it was a schemed touch. You talk about getting dynamic players, the ball in space, and turning it into punt return left or punt return right. Well, the Dolphins had Durham Smythe, and Tyree Kill, Tyree Kill's in an H-back alignment, and they've hit him there before and had him run the out motion. Well, they kept him in. They didn't run motion with him. They ran motion with somebody else going against the grain, so going from right to left, and Tyree Kill's in an H-back alignment uh, on the left-hand side of the formation at the snap. And Tua at the snap with jet motion going from right to left, takes the snap, turns his back to the defense, fakes the sweep, to the back in the backfield and pitches the ball forward to Tyree kill who was hidden in the backfield, who is now going again, opposite the action of the jet motion. And at this, at, at the time in which Tyree kill touches the ball, nine of the 11 defenders on the field are immediately rendered useless because of the motion, because of the leverage and because of Tyree kill speed. They didn't even block the, the defensive end to the side that Tyree Kill was going to be running. Now, Durham Smythe actually is escorting him because he's the other eligible that's there where Tyree Kill's in the H-back alignment. Durham Smythe's inside of him. So Durham Smythe flows along with him, and he gets across the formation, and he turns to like seal the defensive end. And, and literally, it becomes Tyree Kill versus a corner and a safety on one half of the football field. And Tyreek runs out of bounds for not, not touch for like a 12 yard gain in a first down. But it's, it's plays like that, that you talk about getting your playmaker, the ball in space. You got a scheme touch to the best eligible in football right now. And at the snap, when he touched the ball, it was two on one for half the field to defend against a touchdown. From a plane design perspective, all of the flowers that get heaped in Mike McDaniel's direction right now, they're deserved. And that's not to say that it's going to be like that every single game and it's always going to be sunshine and rainbows, but there is a chemistry in which the Dolphins are operating right now. And it is a delight. And we'll talk about the defensive side of the ball next that's coming up on our next episode of Locked on Dolphins. So make sure you keep it locked in right here on the Locked on Network. I'm Kyle Krabs, host of Locked on Dolphins. Hope you guys enjoyed this discussion in regards to Miami's offensive performance against Carolina. We got defense coming next, and then we're going to turn the page to week seven and the Philadelphia Eagles. You can find us on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Hope to see you again soon. Fins up.